Hello, hello everyone. Just getting everything ready for tonight's Facebook Live. I'm so excited to be crafting with y'all. Uh, so if you just give me a minute or so and we will get ready shortly. And if you guys are dropping by, just make a quick comment to say hello. And I'd love to hear where you guys are watching from and what you're up to tonight. There we go, all plugged in. There we go. I'm hoping that everyone's having a fantastic evening. I've been looking forward to crafting with y'all all day today, so it's super fun just to be here with you guys. Hello, Amy from Tampa, Florida. I'm sure you're having a very much more warm weather day than I'm having. I woke up, it was very cloudy, I got a little bit of sunshine, and then I got cloudy again. So, fun, fun. And then I've got my moderator here, which I'm pretty certain is Julia. So hello, Julia. I hope you're having a good night as well. 85 degrees. Oh, sounds beautiful. I'm, I think it'll be probably starting to climb up in Illinois soon. Um, but we're still dealing with about the 50s over here. So you've got it much, much warmer than us. So I'm going to give it maybe about a minute or so longer before we jump into some coloring and crafting. I am really loving the unconventional week that we've got going on right now. It's a little bit of an interesting theme because it really makes you want to think outside of the box. Um, and I'll tell you guys kind of my thought process once we get to like the set that I chose and whatnot, but the education team has really been doing some really fun themes this week. Um, I know that Heather had used some sort of mermaid scale inspired items and turned them into pineapple, um, like the outside exterior of a pineapple. I thought that was really unique. I believe it was Larissa yesterday. She turned, um, it was what, sunflowers into Gerber daisies. And I thought that was also really cute. Um, so the paper education team has really been serving up some fun stuff this week. And I hope that you guys have been enjoying it. Um, oh, the sun did, oh, I'm glad the sun came out for you. It wasn't out super long for me and I was in my cubicle slightly admiring sunshine. So that's slightly fun. So, and then, oh, Florida's a paradise. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it there. I know you guys definitely get the best weather this time of year. All right, everyone. I think I'm going to take a quick drink of water and then we're going to go ahead and get into some crafting. And I'm super, super excited for this card. So if you guys have checked out the graphic, um, the card that I'm going to be creating tonight is this springtime card. And what I love about this card is that it is originally a Christmas set. This is actually a reindeer. I'll bring it down a little bit. And with the reindeer, um, I've colored him up previously and I gave him kind of a Rudolph sort of appearance with a red nose, darker fur, a lighter snout. And I thought it'd be really pretty to give it sort of like a fawn color and to put a customized sentiment on and to make a floral background. And I'm loving how this all turned out. And I'm going to show you guys everything that I use tonight, all the flock, the glitz glitter gel. We'll go through it step by step. And I'm also here to ask questions as well for when you create yourself. Oh, thank you so, so much, Dawn. And hello, Jean and Ann from Virginia. All right, and I'm just realizing I might have to use some different embellishments tonight, and that's okay. I've got some other ones on my desk that I know that'll work just perfectly. So, all right, so what we're gonna get into first is making the background, and I'm going to be using a three-layered stencil. Um, so it's three different steps. I've prepped some of them in advance just because we've gotta wait for some items to dry, but that's not a problem at all. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is I have a piece of blending cardstock. This is just uh, A2 size, so four and a quarter by five and a half, and we're going to be doing a two-tone color blend on this using some Distress Oxides. Um, I like 
like to create color this way for my backgrounds because it gives me a little bit more of a customized background. Um, but you can also start with uh, a light pink cardstock as well if you have that and only uh, do one color, which would work perfectly. And then we've got Nancy from Muskegon, Michigan. Welcome, welcome, Nancy. Thank you so much for being here. Um, so the first color that I'm going to be using for my Distress Oxides is I'm going to be using Sponge Sugar. Um, I'm going to be using three Distress Oxides in total tonight. I know you just said I'm making a background with two, um, but there will be a third one, and I'll introduce that shortly. But I'm using like my trifecta of pinks with oxides tonight. And this sponge sugar is just going to kind of lightly discolor my paper and it's going to turn it from that super stark white look into like a very, very light baby pink. I'm just going out with my foam blender, making sure I get a nice blend. And this is gonna be my background for all my cards or all my layers that I'm gonna be doing. Everything's gonna be building upon this. I am using a, um, what I call blending card stock. And what that is, is the Strathmore Bristol Smooth 300 series, which is honestly a game changer when it comes to blending your oxides. The, it's almost like this paper. I know it's meant for like coloring and different types of like drawing purposes, but like I almost feel like this paper was designed for oxide inks because they just blend so beautifully on it. If you haven't tried it yet, I would definitely recommend trying out this paper, especially because it's going to work really well with layering the different products that we're gonna be using tonight that have a little bit more of a weight to them. Since we're gonna be using some uh, Transfer Gel Duo, we're gonna be using some Flock, some Glitz Gel. Those all can kind of weigh down your paper where you wanna make sure what you're putting it onto has a nice weight so there's not any sort of warpage or any sort of seepage with it. Um, and it's gonna keep your project nice and sturdy. All right, there we go. We've got that light pink going on. And I'm gonna take that, put it to the side, and now I'm gonna distress the edges just to give a nice little like color variation going on. And I'm gonna be using some Kitsch Flamingo. So we're just gonna do the edges like I was saying. And you're gonna see immediately how that Kitsch Flamingo really darkens up the sides. And I love using multiple different colors when I do my backgrounds. Because it's really nice to get that sort of fading effect on there, it gives your product that extra sort of finished look and that extra bit of detail that your recipient can appreciate or you can just appreciate doing it because I know I love myself a good distress, uh, distressed look. Hello from wintry Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, currently watching the snow shower outside. Well, I don't have that going on in Chicago today, so I do apologize that you're going through that, Bridget. But I did think that paper technique is really important. I, I know that a lot of us operate with different supplies and different budgets, and I know that sometimes we get that really nice paper and we sort of hoard onto it because it's a little on the expensive side, and sometimes we get those coupons to big box stores and you can pick up a nice pack of like 10 different cardstock colors. Um, and those work perfectly for different items and crafting. But sometimes when it comes to those certain tasks that you need heavier paper for, or even like card bases, um, you wanna make sure that you've got a couple good options on hand that'll help with that, because you'll really see a difference. All right, it looks a little sloppy. We're gonna clean it up though. So I'm going back. I'm gonna go back to sponge sugar. I don't know if I'm actually going to need to get new sponge sugar, though. I think I'm just gonna use what's existing on my foam blender, and I'm just gonna smooth out my edges. And any of the products that I'm talking about tonight, you guys, I do have a blog post that I wrote up on the ThermoWeb blog that's got everything listed out for these products for you guys. If you, anything speaks to you that you might wanna add to your own crafting stash for you just to have quick sort of access to it. Of course, I've highlighted all of my ThermoWeb project, uh, products that I'll be using, but any of the non-ThermoWeb products are also listed underneath for you guys to have access to as well. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead that's all blended. 
Perfect. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to be using the Spring Blossoms background stencil, which is by Lawn Fawn. And Lawn Fawn has really been coming out with some fantastic background stencils recently that are layers. Um, so this one is a three-part stencil. I've got two parts in front of me. The third part I have a little bit stashed away for when I come to the set, um, to the, the appropriate stencil. So we're going to use what I call the A stencil, which is the first one. And this is really like the bulk of all the flower petals. So I don't know if you guys can see, but if you're using layered stencils, it's really important before you start using them that you make sure you know the orientation they have to be in. For example, for this Lawn Fawn stencil, Lawn Fawn has etched their company's website into the bottom of one of the sides. So I know like if I call this like my first side, like the front, and then the non etched side is the back. So I know that for each card, I am going to be trying to look for that um, etching, and that's going to be my bottom edge. Other P, it's really important to have that sort of situated to make sure they're all in the same orientation, and that makes it really easy for you to go ahead and line them up. Um, what I'm going to be doing first is I'm going to be using some pixie tape, and you could do pixie tape, you could do pixie spray, whatever works best for you. I like using the pixie tape. I've used quite a bit of my first roll already. I love this stuff. It's a really great almost washi tape feel to it, but it really securely attaches your paper to anything that you're really looking for. Specifically, stencils work nicely, or if you're going to use it for die cutting purposes, it's really good for running it, uh, your paper through your die cutter as well and holding it into place. All right, so what we're gonna be doing next is I've got some picked raspberry distress oxide, which I think is my favorite pink distress color just because it's so bold. All right, so we're gonna go in, I've got my foam blender and we're just gonna go in. And then when I am done with this layer, I promise I'm gonna go in and I'm going to catch up on if I've missed any comments. So I apologize in advance if I've missed anything. But as I am going along, if you have any questions for me, please, please be sure to drop the comments into the live. I will get to it as soon as I can um, and try to answer any questions. If I have to go over a step again for you, please just let me know. All right, so we're blending, 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 making sure to get what I call a solid layer. And what I mean by that is that every sort of opening in the stencil looks like it's received an even coating of ink, that nothing really looks like it's gotten more than another. This looks pretty good in my opinion. So I think I'm good to go to set this off to the side. So just remember, like I said, I am using that Lawn Fawn etching as a guide, which is going to be on the bottom of the side that I want to use. So, all right, and then let me see, comments. Oh, hello, Janice, thanks so much for stopping by. All right, I'm going to leave it so that pixie tape is, oh, I wanted it still attached to the back, but you can see it really grabs onto that stencil, which is fantastic. All right, so we're gonna go ahead. I can put my oxide away. Now we're gonna move on to stencil number two, which is gonna help us build off those stems, which those are going to be um, some screaming green neon flock. And I love the neon flocks. They're just so much fun to craft with. They really give you that really nice sort of bold that you're looking for with your crafting. Um, so I'm excited to do that with you all tonight. So I'm going ahead and I'm looking and I see that, and this stencil is a little loved. You can see that it's a little dirty, but it still works just perfectly fine. Um, I have my lawnfawn.com on the bottom side and I know that I can line everything up. And I know that these flower stems are going on to the pink section. So I just wanna make sure I'm getting that little bit of overlap and I am, and I'm gonna go ahead and press it into my pixie tape. And I actually, what I'm going to do is grab a piece of some scrap cardstock, just like that. Oh, and I think we're good. Okay, perfect. Make sure it's nice and centered so you guys can see. And I am going to grab some Transfer Gel Duo. Um, before I get into it, the reason why I will be using the Transfer Gel Duo tonight is because the Transfer Gel Duo allows you to use either a heat 
or a no heat transfer method. And I didn't really feel like turning on my laminator when I was creating this card. I figured I would just kind of go ahead and do a no heat method. Um, and it's just, it's one less thing to worry about, which is really nice. Or for those of us who don't have laminators, um, it's a great option to have. So I'm gonna show you guys tonight how to make this card without any sort of heat at all. So I'm gonna grab one of my spatulas and I'm gonna take some of this transfer gel and we're gonna go ahead and put it just right on the top. And I do have one of my stencil pals as well. I'm gonna be using this to just really quickly scrape my transfer gel duo, making sure to get it into each of the crevices. And this actually goes really quickly. The transfer gel duo is just a really nice sort of quick transfer. You don't really have to play around too much. You kind of can run through just one solid time and you get a really good application. So we're gonna go ahead, scrape off the excess. All right, and then this is gonna go here and put my transfer gel duo away. And I'm going to remove my stencil very carefully. And I'm saying carefully just because I don't want to smudge any of my stenciled items. All right. So I'm going to put this aside just so I can clean off my stencil really quickly. I'm actually going, I have a bag of Windex that I'm going to be using and I'm swishing it around off camera just so I can keep my stencils in nice pristine condition. Actually, we're gonna go ahead and put my tools in there as well. And this way it doesn't allow that transfer gel duo to dry and coat onto my stencil. So I'm just, I apologize for the noise. Promise this isn't gonna take very long. Clean it up off camera, perfect. Okay, so let me go ahead and show you guys. So this is our finished Transfer Gel Duo panel. I got a really nice transfer on there, but you do need to let this dry before you can use it. Um, I usually say give yourself a good 30 to 60 minutes depending on the impression that you're getting with it. Um, obviously, I don't have that time with you right now just to sit and watch it dry and talk. I mean, maybe in the future if we've got some topic to go over, that would be great. But we're not gonna do that today. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put this aside, save this panel for another day right over there for now. And I already have another panel all dried up for you. And it's the same pattern, same colors. So we're just gonna go ahead and use that. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do is, let's see, we're gonna take the tape off. So good, if you love the look of the white, you should use our Decafoil Blanco and leave it as is. I love the Blanco too. I love the Blanco because you really do get that really nice stark white look to it and it's really a great effect. Um, you can use it just as a paste or you can use a heat transfer method to transfer your favorite foils or flocks to it as well. Um, I, I do love the Blanco as well. All right, so I'm taking some of this pixie tape off. And what we're gonna go ahead and do next is I'm going to run this through a, my die cutting machine. Um, and I'm gonna use my manual die cutter for this part of the project. So I've got some, this is some Rena K Designs Electropop Neon Flock in the Screaming Green. I needed to cover the entire panel. You do get some good dimension, that is true. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and da 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 da. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this panel face down like that. And then I'm gonna grab my scissors and I'm going to trim off the edge. Now, when you are doing a flock transfer, it's different than a foil transfer. And what I mean by that is, you know how when you foil, the color is, 
not touching the paper. What I mean by that is this, like the colored side of your foil. There's like a color side and then there's like a silver side. The silver side is what you put directly onto your paper where the color looks at you. Flock is the opposite. Flock, the flock colored side is going to be what's touching your paper and then the back is facing away. So it's opposite of what you would think for foil. And that's because you want that flock to touch and then when you peel it off, it's going to transfer for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this little extra strip that I have back in my can uh, container, container, plastic sleeve, whatever you wanna call it. And I'm going to grab my die cutting machine. Let's see. All right, so I want you guys to still be able to see that I am definitely using it. I know that you, it's kind of off camera just a wee bit. Let me grab my sandwich plates. And then I'm going to treat this just like I would if it was just like a thin metal die. So I'm putting it in my sandwich. Oop, sorry about the loud noise. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just crank this through. Cool. All right, so I'm gonna take my die cutting machine, put it away minimize any sort of noise and then I'm going to take out my flocked piece which is just slightly sticking to my paper or my uh panel. and now we're going to do a peel reveal so we're going to go ahead and we're just going to pull that flock back and I really like using my manual die cutting machine to do the flock transfer because I feel like it's just the right amount of pressure for it and it doesn't warp the paper at all. And now I've actually got this piece as well left over that I'll be able to save for later. So we've got that scream and green beautifully transferred onto the flower stems. It's gonna give some great greenery pieces, really excited to use it, but of course we've gotta glitz it up as well. So we're gonna do some glitz and did you know that you can glitz on top of your flock? which is perfect for tonight's project. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to get my third stencil. Thank you so much, Donna. I thought the green just pops really nicely with all the different shades of pink that we're gonna be using. Um, and pink and green really do go so well together. So I'm gonna go ahead, I've got some more pixie tape. This is actually recycled pixie tape that I took off before we ran it through the die cutting machine. And thank you, Kimberly. I, I really do like them. I actually did have a thought, though, after I made this card. I'm going to be using some bubblegum pink glitz gel, which really drives home that pink palette. But colors that would also look really good is if you have the gold or if you have, I believe, is it wild lilac? No, it's lovely lavender. If you have the lovely lavender glitz gel or the gold gel, that's also going to look super pretty with this palette as well. Um, or change up your palette if you don't have those colors and you're, I'm sure you're going to find a combination that's going to work perfect for you. So, all right, so I'm going to go ahead. Now this one, I believe I have to do upside down. Yes. So I'm lining this up. All right. And as you can see, I do have a little bit of the stem of the flowers that's poking through. Now I'm going to be transparent. The reason that I have that is I don't think that I did these stencils in the order that Lawn Fawn intends. However, in order for me to do the flocking and then the glitzing, I had to do it in this order because I can't run my glitz through my die cutting machine or through my laminator. It's gonna ruin my project. So I was like, you know what? I know that glitz works on top of flock. So I, when I do this, I'm just gonna get a little bit of glitz to cover up those stem areas. It's gonna look perfect. I'm not even worried about it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead Make sure this is all pressed down. Like I said, if you have pixie spray, that would work perfectly as well. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a piece of scrap paper. Can you use a Gemini if you do not have a hand crank one? You can. So um, I'll, before I do this transfer, I will, I'll talk about that just for a minute, Ruth, because I actually have a Gemini Junior and I use that all the time. Um, I, it works perfectly. I do think a Gemini has a little bit more pressure than a regular uh, hand crank machine, at least from what I've noticed. So you may need a little bit more force just in separating them, but it really should work fine. 
And that's just from what my experience is. Other people may have had different experiences as well. Um, so, okay, so what we're gonna go ahead and be doing, I've got some Bubblegum Pink Glitz Glitter Gel. And I'm gonna go ahead, let me see, do I have, I'm gonna use this pink one, this black one, because it's really easy to color, uh, to clean up. So I'm gonna go ahead, let's see, that should be enough. And I'm just gonna kind of scrape it off. And then I've got another stencil pal. What's great about the stencil pals, they come in a pack of two, and you never know when you're gonna need a second one. So I'm clearly using two with y'all tonight. It's always good to have a second on hand too, just because you never know when you might not be making a run to your kitchen sink. Or bathroom sink, whatever's closest. Or whatever sink that your spouse has allowed you to clean off your glitz gels in, because my husband did tell me earlier today he found some pink glitter in our kitchen sink, and I'm like, well, yes, you would find that there. All right. Perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna scrape off the excess. I actually have some of my finger as well that I'd like to scrape off. Oh yes, a sink is essential for crafting and it's always essential for any sort of glitzy or foiling crafting. Oh, my sink gets a workout. All right, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to drop my stencil pal into my Ziploc bag with my Windex and let's do a peel reveal before I clean that up. So we're gonna go ahead, see if I can find a clean corner. And as you can see, we've got a really nice glitzed background. Which is really gonna work perfectly for this card. Now I have an extra hang on to as well. So that's always nice. And I'll bring it up to the camera a little bit more in a second, just so you guys can see it a little closer. I just wanna make sure that my stencils are getting nice and cleaned. So that way when I go to officially clean them later, I don't have any sort of issues. All right, perfect. All right, let me go ahead and just wipe my hand just a little bit. I have glitter all over, but that's normal, right? All right, so let me go ahead. I'm gonna show you guys this panel a little bit closer. And you're gonna see you get all that fun glitz along with that flock and it adds for some really fun variations in texture because you've got raised surfaces with the flock and the glitz. You've got the glitz on top of the flock in some of the areas. So it really works out nicely and you have a really pretty background. It's really like making your own pattern paper. And I feel like some of like the pattern paper that we covet the most are the ones that have those glitter or metallic accents and then you can make your own. So I love stencils that allow me to use my glitz gels or my foils like this. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I am going to put this off to the side just so it can dry. But because I've been working in advance, I have another one that's already dried for you guys. So this is the panel that we're gonna be using for tonight's project. Um, and we've got most of the pieces together. I was gonna, I'm gonna show you guys another technique that you can do with flocks and it's a lot of fun um, because you can ink blend on your flocks as well. On top of doing your glitz on your flock, you can ink on your flock. So, I mean, the flock is probably one of the most versatile components or products that the uh, Thermal Web Store does have. And I just took a quick water break. If you're ever doing a Facebook Live, you need water. All right, so I'm gonna move this just off to the side for now. Now I am using a second flock and what I'm going to be upfront with on this as well is this is clearly a used piece of flock. I've used part of it for this project, part of it for other projects. And I just feel like when it comes to your ThermoWeb products, save them and recycle them as much as you can. Use every centimeter, square centimeter that you possibly can of each of your foils and of your flocks before you throw them in the trash because you're going to get a lot of use out of it. So I just wanted to show you, even myself, I keep my scraps and I'm going to be using them with you guys tonight too. 
is there a way to save this video on how to do this technique? Um, so you, I believe, Ruth, that there should be an option that you can click a flag, um, like a flag icon to save this video for yourself. This video will be available as a replay in the ThermoWeb Craft Room group, but also I am going to be uploading this to our uh, YouTube account as well. So this will be a video on the ThermoWeb YouTube channel. I'm going to try and get it up there no later than tomorrow. Um, well, I'm going to upload it and then we're going to process it. So it should be there soon. And then it'll always be available there for you to find as well. So whichever of those ways is going to be easiest of you to find it. But yes, this will be available for you for a replay and you should be able to save it as well. Um, Sherry says, beautiful. Thank you so much, Sherry. Amy loves textures too. She has so much flock. She needs to start using it. And then, yep, and thank you so much. Uh, Julia's got me all covered with that, so thank you. Um, so what we're gonna be doing is, like I said, we're gonna be inking on some of our flocks. So as you can see, this is the pop and pink neon flock from the Electropop line of Rena K Designs. And I'm gonna be ink blending the bottom of this. Normally, I do all of my die cutting with y'all before I get onto my live, because I don't want you guys to have to deal with me having to crank stuff or run stuff through or listening to the noise, but I'm gonna be doing it while I am during my live with you tonight, just so you can see how I do it. So if you have an iPhone, click the three dots on top. It should allow you to say, thank you so much, Amy. I appreciate your help. That helps a lot. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna do a little bit of ink blending on the bottom of this, and then we're gonna die cut. So I'm gonna go ahead. I've got some festive berries distressing, and festive berries is really like between a pink and a red, so you can use a pink brush, you can use a red brush, whatever you think. I'm gonna use pink tonight. And I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna ink blend the bottom of my flock panel. And you're gonna get a nice discoloration. It's gonna be a subtle ombre, but nonetheless an ombre. And I feel like that ombre effect is what so many of us are sought after when we're doing our ink blending. And you can just kind of apply it so it's darkest towards the edge of the paper and then lightly bring it towards the center. And that's how you're gonna get a nice variance of color. So let me see. So you guys can see there's that little change where it goes from a very red violet to like a, that fluorescent sort of neon pink color. And you can do this with any of your flocks. It doesn't have to be the Rena K series. The, re the Decofoil flocks do this perfectly. Um, and you can do any colors as well. You know how there's like the white latte flock? You can use that. And if you want a custom flock color, you can ink blend that whatever color you want. I mean, if you want brown flock, go ahead and do it with the, the white latte one. Or you can take like the Tuscan gold and ink blend that with some brown as well. And you're gonna get a really nice sort of ombre effect with that. Just depends on what you're looking for. Sorry, so we're gonna put the festive berries away and then I'm gonna grab some thin alpha dyes. These are from Pink and Main. And as you can see, they sell, uh, spell out spring. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm just gonna place them onto my panel. Now I do also wanna let you know that there's a very good chance that by me using this pixie tape, it's going to pick up some of the flock. So that's totally fine. I'm expecting it, but I don't want you guys getting surprised by that if you use this method yourself. And I'm gonna use my electronic die cutter, so my Gemini Junior for this part. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put this in my sandwich. We're gonna process it through. So I apologize in advance for the noise. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this. And I've got my spring lettering with my ombre. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that into my little cup that I have. Now, when I'm done with this, I am gonna let you guys know another tip for when you ink blend and then die cut in that order. So I gotta get this off first. All right. My eye. You know what, I'm gonna grab my pick tool because that should really help me. Perfect. Let's see, get that off. Great. All right, I can put this away. 
Now, I am actually going to shift into a little bit of a cleaning mode because when you ink blend and then you die cut your flock, your flock is, um, the dyed flock is with the ink is going to transfer into your uh, die cuts. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to clean off the insides uh, of my die cut just so I don't really get a surprise the next time that I go ahead to use these letters. Hello, Tina, I hope you're having a wonderful night. And yes, you can blend the flock. It's super fun and it really does, like I keep saying, makes it very versatile. So I'm gonna go ahead, I've got some cleaning solution. All right, that should be okay. And I'm gonna use one of my craft towels. And we're gonna clean this up right away. And then another easy way to clean this up too is if you have a scrap piece of cardstock, you could run this through with the scrap cardstock and you're gonna be able to just get a really nice clean with it. So just make sure if you're using any sort of liquid that you're drying it off right away just so you don't have any sort of water issues with your metal dyes. You don't wanna accidentally ruin anything. I don't know if that'll happen on them immediately, but sometimes we leave things on our desk for an extended period of time and things happen. All right, so I've got my letters. I have my background. So now we just kind of have to go into like an assembly phase. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my sentiment. I already have my sentiment strip that says you warm my heart. And my sentiment is gonna be spring, you warm my heart. Um, but what I wanna do first is I wanna stack my sentiment. I have my sentiment also for the spring also die cut in white in a very thick cardstock. And I'm gonna go ahead and glue the pink on top of the white. So let me see. I just wanna make sure I'm layering it appropriately. All right. Make sure the eye is appropriate in the right orientation. All right, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I've got my very well-loved ultra bond adhesive bottle that I'm gonna be using to adhere this. And I'm just gonna use my poke tool, what do you call it, a piercer, just to hold my paper down. Put the pink right on top. Move it into place. Perfect. That one's done. This one takes a little bit of time. So if you guys have any questions, this is a great time to ask them because I can try my best to multitask just because this is a little on the tedious side. But it's going to give some really nice um, like layering to my project and really make that word spring pop. I highly recommend when you all are using any sort of letter die cuts that if you stack and hear them like what I'm doing right now, some people even do it with like up to three to four layers, depending on how thick you want it to look, it really adds a nice depth to your project. I always go towards one of my most used phrases is talking about those finishing touches or those finished edges that your card would have or your, whatever you're making, your scrapbook layout, your gift tags, your treat boxes. Think about those little things that are like little detail items that really add to the overall image. I like to say that like a lot of that distressing of the edges works well with it. Um, stacking your sentiments work really well. Foam tape can work really well. You know we've got that and I'll be using some foam tape tonight. Um, certain embellishments can really help with that. Foil in general can be just one of those really sort of wow factors and flock as well. All right, let's see, am I missing any comments? No, nothing yet, perfect. But yeah, this is just gonna be a really nice way to add that little bit of a finished edge and depth to the product, project. I keep on inter use, interchanging the words product and project.
but this flock is just gonna look so pretty. I love all the pinks between the bubblegum glitz and the electro pop, uh, pop and pink flock onto that oxide background. If you guys have not snagged any of this flock from the Rena K Designs line, you gotta grab some. It's really great. And I'm not trying to just be like a general like, oh, get this, it's fantastic. I use the Rena K Electropop line a lot. I've got the inks, I've got the enamel, I've got the flocks, and it just really makes my products, or my, see, I did it again. It makes my project super vibrant. But if I wanna mute it down, I can ink blend my flock on top of it, and it does that. Did you make your background paper? I missed the beginning. Yes, 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 yes. I made that background piece that is with the uh, Lawn Fawn Spring Blossoms background stencil and I did some ink blending and then I did some flock and some glitz gel. So I did make the background um, with a, almost all ThermoWeb products and a couple inks. And that's exactly what it is, Julia, is making a project with products. And it's like, am I talking about the product or am I, ta or am I talking about one of the products or am I talking about the overall project? I tell you, it's something, it's a tongue twister, but that's okay. All right, so I've got my spring and what I want to do is I want to kind of lay this out and I'm going to put my all of my um, letters so they are like on the same line of my grid mat. And this is a good tip whenever you're working with um, letter die cuts because you can make sure it's spaced appropriately because you don't want to start pasting it one by one onto your project, I use the right one, and all of a sudden you realize it's not centered the way that you want. So this is going to be a really nice way to make sure that that custom die cut sentiment is going to be nice and centered for you. All right, so this looks pretty good. I think we're pretty good with that. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm gonna use another piece of pixie tape. Oh, but you know what? The end is upside down. There we go. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and do, so I'm gonna grab this and then I'm going to take my tape, I took a little too much. And I'm gonna press it down, but I don't wanna press it down like super, super hard, just enough so there's a little bit of tack. It's not gonna pull, no, boy, that's okay. I can do it directly onto here now. You just don't wanna put it onto a tape that has a lot of like stickiness to it because you don't wanna pull that flock off. And I swear I just heard like an owl outside or something. You know, this worked well when I did it the other day. Oh, you know what it is? It's because I used my pick tool to do it. So just bear with me for a second. I'm gonna get this all lined up. And by using the pick tool, it really allows me to touch it with my fingers and then hold it down with something else. Oh, we're having an operator error right now. That's okay, I'll get there. Really, as long as I have some of them into place, I can work around it. All right, we got that. And then we're gonna do the R. And we'll do the P. And the S. All right, we're getting there. Sorry about my quiet. Okay. The end needs to go just a little bit up. Perfect. 
All right, what am I missing in comments? Yep. We're just gonna go ahead and get this all situated and I can move them into place as need be. All right, we're gonna just go. So we're going to scrap that idea just for a moment and I'm just gonna go ahead and add these in. And I'm gonna use my previous card as a guide for my spacing. So, I think that will work very well. And let's go ahead and we'll do the S next. I'm sorry about the hiccup, but sometimes you just gotta pivot. I don't want you guys having to see me fumble with this for too much longer, so I apologize about that, but we're gonna get there. block just to kind of hold that down. Do the end next. All right. Next we'll do the R and the I takes up no space at all. Ooh, deep breaths y'all, deep breaths. Hey, it happens. That's what happens when we do these live, you know? Sometimes things are a little sensitive. That's okay. All right, and then we're gonna use our eye. We're gonna put a little bit more adhesive on the other side of that. Just like this. All right, you know what? That looks pretty good for eyeballing it. I'm quite pleased. So we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna grab an acrylic block. I'm gonna use that to hold it down. All right. Little letters can be a little tricky. And the other thing too is because the pixie tape is a lower tack tape, that sometimes with something like a flock, you got to apply a little bit of a pressure to it to get it to pick. And it's like, you don't want the pixie tape to be super sticky because that's why otherwise it's going to rip your paper. So it, hey, we pivot, we pivot and we figure it out. So what I'm going to do is I'm pressing this down. This is going to adhere this to my project. I'm going to go ahead. I see I used the right one that time. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna trim off some foam tape. And this is, I'm using my roll of this 1 16th inch in the white. Um, I can promise you that your roll of foam tape when you buy it is going to be a lot larger than this. This just means it's very well loved. I'm gonna set that off to the side. And I'm going to whip my sentiment. I wanna trim it a little bit just cause my sentiment strip is almost perfectly an inch and a half thick. All right, wonderful. And we're gonna trim off the edge. Perfect. Then I wanna center this right under my sentiment. Like this. Beautiful. All right, so now we've got our sentiment of spring, you warm my heart. Now, what brings it to the little bit of unconventional portion is I do have my little 
mug all ready to go. And I figured, you know what, this can be some sort of like a spring cocktail. Maybe Starbucks has like a spring mocha drink or frappuccino that they came out with that they're putting with the, a little dollop of whipped cream on top of. Um, so that was kind of my inspiration for this. This is a Christmas stamp set. Um, it's called Mugs and Kisses by Pink and Main, which is where I got the sentiment from and this image. And it's really nice because you can layer your different mugs to have different sort of effects in it um, or different toppings. Um, and I took my reindeer, turned it into like a springtime deer, and I'm going to bring this all back to Thermoweb because deers rut. And why do they rut? Because their antlers are flocky. So I think it's just like the perfect excuse for a flock project. Shamrock Shake Vibes, that's true too. And thank you so much, Sherry. I appreciate you saying that they look like they're lined up perfectly because that was, you know, a little bit of a hiccup, but we got through it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add some foam tape to the back of our project, or to the back of our image for the project. Right. And y'all, we're kind of close to done too. I've gotta put a couple embellishments on. And that's gonna kind of do it. And also too, I have to also be honest, the reason I put embellishments on my original one is because I had a couple little imperfections that I wanted to cover up. And that's always what embellishments work good for, but you don't have to tell people that, they can just look pretty. All right, there we go, perfect. And it's so fun. I love the idea to extend those holiday stamps into spring. It can be done. Yes, it can. Get that holiday use any time of the year. All right, so we're going to go ahead. We're going to peel off the foam tape backing. I do love the Thermoweb foam tape because that iCraft 3D foam tape, just the backing comes off nicely. You don't really have to struggle with it too much and you get such a nice adhesive to your project with it. I use it in every project. It's such a staple in my craft stash. I just got a new roll about a, one or two weeks ago. Haven't opened it yet, but I'm, I know I have it backed up for when I need it. All right, we're gonna go ahead. This looks pretty centered to me, maybe a little bit over. Just like that. All right. All right. I have like one dog fur that I don't know why it got under here. You know what, that's what tweezers are for. Does anyone else craft and they find their pet's fur? Or places that you should not be finding pet's fur? There we go. <laughs> All right. We will finish this off with some embellishments. Now for my original project, I used some. These are flamenco beach sequins from Catherine Pooler. Um, I didn't grab those and I apologize. So we're gonna be using some Studio Katia iridescent bubbles. Um, those work well with anything. So we'll use some of those tonight. Oh, gray hairs. Thank you guys so, so much. Oh, I'm so glad that you learned a little bit more about Flock tonight, Bridget. It's honestly, it can really be a game changer. It's super fun to craft with as well. I will admit the first time I purchased some Flock, I was intimidated by it because I hadn't used it before. And I was like, I don't know what velvet is going to be like. It's, it's sort of like a velvety material in your craft stash. And I will tell you what, it is super easy. I even think that sometimes Flock is more forgiving than foiling because it just needs that sticky niche, uh, stickiness to latch onto. So if if like with your transfer gel, if you have like a bubble or something, you cover it with flock, you're never gonna know it again. So it's it's really a great addition to your craft space. All right, let's see. Let me get a jumper. Just like that. 
I love craft supplies that are forgiving. And it is, it's no mess. It's, it's really, really easy to use. As you guys can see tonight, I really didn't struggle with it at all. I mean, just don't cut, don't cut that die cutting. That has nothing to do with it. We, we won't talk about that. It's like Bruno. We don't talk about it. It's okay. Yeah, my glue needs to be a little bit refreshed. Give it a little bit of a pin. All right, there we go. Just make sure when cutting pop with flock with a paper trimmer, have the paper side facing the blade. Yes, so you want your flock when you're cutting it with a trimmer, make sure that your flock itself, so that fuzzy side is face down, that it's like touching the base of your paper trimmer. That way when you cut it, the first thing that your blade is going to hit is the back side, which is that paper. You're gonna get a much cleaner cut with your flock that way. And y'all, we're done. We got our embellishments and this is looking like super, super cute. So, okay, so we continued with our unconventional themed week. I love the thermal web theme weeks. It's always so fun. And I love that we did an unconventional theme because it really makes you want to stretch your stash a little bit. And we used a winter holiday stamp set and customized it with some alpha dyes and we turned it into a spring set. And we did that with the use of some of the electro pop neon, neon flocks. We did use the scream and green for the background um, and we use some pop and pink for the word dye as well or word dyes alpha dyes whatever you want to call it other products we used we did of course use that bubblegum pink glitz glitter gel and remember like i said if you guys have other colors that you would either rather use or you don't have the bubblegum pink make your own color palette it's totally flexible you, if you have the emerald green flock, not the screaming green neon flock, that's going to work really well as, as well. Also, you could use the pop in pink as the stems, and then it, you can use the pink carnation flock on top of it. Um, I think you can flock on flock. I feel like you would be able to. Hey, try it. Maybe I'll try it for a future live, but I know you can glitz on flock, so that's always good to know. Um, flock on flock. That's interesting. You know, maybe I'll test that first. So don't, don't go, maybe I'll do that. Um, but yeah, this turned out super, super cute. Don't forget, I've got all the products that we use tonight on the ThermoWeb blog. I've got all of our ThermoWeb products listed for you for easy access. Um, if you wanna know any of the ink colors that I use tonight, those are gonna be listed for you as well, um, just for easy access for you, along with the stamp sets, the stencils, items like that. Um, if you guys have any questions, you can always Put a comment into the Thermal Web Craft Room group. Just tag me in the comment. I'll be happy to get to you as soon as I absolutely can. Answer your questions. This live is going to remain in the Thermal Web Craft Room group, but we're also going to upload it to the YouTube channel for Thermal Web as well. That way you guys will be able to watch it in the future. Go ahead and make sure you're subscribing to the Thermal Web channel on YouTube. That way you guys will see when it gets uploaded. It's a great way to not have to forget about it. So thank you guys so, so much for being here tonight. And I did, I guess I did a kind of inspire the week. I did, I did kind of turn a Halloween card into a Valentine's Day card or Valentine's just Halloween stamp set into it. Um, I like doing it. I like, I like inspiring the week. I hope I can do it again. Um, but thank you all so, so much for being here. I had a wonderful time. Um, and I hope to see you guys on the next one. I'm going to be back in two weeks. We have another fun themed week coming up and I'm going to be doing a little bit more work with some flock for you guys. Um, in the process of planning it out, I've got a rough idea in my head. 
Um, but yeah, so I will see you guys back here two weeks from tonight in the fan club, and I'll look forward to seeing you then. So thank you guys so much for being here. Have a wonderful night. I'm going to stick around for about a minute or so um, just to answer if there's any questions. But of course, I want to thank everyone who's joined me. Thank you, of course, to Julia for moderating and being here. I super appreciate it. Thank you, Amy and Nancy and Bridget. Thank you guys for being here and Sherry and Janice. I really, really do appreciate it. And I have so much fun going live with you guys. It's a lot of fun. It's it's always super funny too because I kind of have to like do the cooking thing when you watch a cooking show and they're like, oh, like put your tray of like cookie dough in the fridge for three hours to chill. And it's like, but I have a tray in there already. So I had to make sure I've got that ready to go for you. And hey, I've got some fun backgrounds now to work with. So I'm excited for that. And thank you, Lynn. Thanks so much for being here. I appreciate it. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to get this closed out. Have a wonderful night. And don't forget, if you're making anything with our DecoFoil products, be sure to share it here in the Thermal Web Craft Room. I want to see what you're making. And especially if you're inspired by anything that you saw me make tonight, of course I want to see what you're making. So make sure to share it. Um, and I can't wait to see what you make. So have a great evening. I'll see you back here in two weeks. And have a wonderful night. <laughs>